This man is, is, is a brilliant man of God, Father God. I already know. Uh, uh, thank you for, for him uh, being in our lives and being part of this ministry, Father God. We thank you for everything you're doing and everything you will do, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Minister Noy. Thank you, Evangelist Jonathan, for opening us up. We just want to thank everybody for being here today. God bless each and every one of you. We want to thank everybody for tuning in to our Facebook Live. We want to thank everybody that later on is going to be tuning in on YouTube once we upload this video later. We thank God for you as well. Um, I, I just want, before I get started, I just want to kind of briefly recap from yesterday. We had an awesome, awesome time yesterday. It was um, Chosen Few Outreach Ministries. First ordination service. Amen. Amen. And I know many of you are viewing that service, and we want to thank you, God, thank you all of you for viewing the service. And you had an opportunity to see the honor that was displayed on these men and women of God in the kingdom who has been laboring in the kingdom, um, being obedient to God in the kingdom, and doing exactly what He wants them to do. And for that reason, God saw fit to honor them before man. And so, some of you probably are like, well, ordination. What is ordination? Because I've had that question. And what does being ordained mean, you know? So I just wanted to kind of let you know what being ordained. See, we are already ordained before God, always ordained before God to do the work of God. But what it does in the eyesight of man, what it gives the authority to each and every individual that was ordained yesterday, it gives them this authority in, the, in, male, in man's realm. So first and foremost, when an individual is ordained in the ministry, they are therefore hereby authorized to preach, teach, perform marriages and funeral ceremonies, and all the arts and sciences of re requisites of a minister. The holder of this certificate is well qualified to demonstrate the law of light, love, and truth, and is worthy and entitled to all the benefits, privileges, and fellowship of religious bodies throughout the universe. Amen. So that is when you're being ordained in the ministry, this gives you that authority to do that. So each one of those individuals that was ordained yesterday have been given the authority and power by the state of California and, and this government to do all those things that I just said. Amen. So that's man standard. That's the reason why we get ordained by man standards to give you the privilege to do those things. But when you're ordained by God's standards, Come on. you don't need no paper. That's right. Okay. Amen. But man requires you to be able to do these functions in the land. So that's what an ordination certificate is given to the individuals that have earned it. That's what that is for. For you, all of you out there that don't know what ordain, being ordained means. Amen. Praise God. God just led me to do that. Praise Amen. his holy name. All right. Now let's get back to business. All right. I don't know about you, but we have been anticipating this day for a very, very long time. Amen. Amen. This man of God faithfully came to this ministry to serve. Amen. That's all he did. He came in to faithfully serve in the outreach. But God revealed to us that he was, had a strong gift of anointing and teaching. But see, how do you know? I mean, how do you know this about an individual? It's what God started displaying in that individual. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? When the Holy Spirit starts showing these things and they just start displaying all of the qualifications of whatever their calling gift is. And that's what began to happen with this man of God. Now, the beautiful thing is also that God is patient with you. Because <laughs> it's all about grooming you. Am I right? We all just don't automatically walk into our calling gifts and begin to operate in them, but God grooms us and prepares us to walk into that field. Amen. So God has been patiently working with this man of God for over 10 months, grooming and preparing and grooming and preparing, grooming and preparing to this day. Amen. And when the Holy Spirit said, okay, man of God, it is time, he didn't hesitate because he knows right. the grooming has Amen. been happening for 10 months. Amen. So without further ado, we are all excited to bring forth the man of God that we know the Holy Spirit is going to use mightily today as he set himself aside. Come on up, brother David Squire, yeah. man of God. Yeah. Just kind of let that go for a second. Hey, man. The prayer you're about to hear is something I've already prayed for myself, but this is for your benefit and mine. Father, I ask that the words that I speak are yours, the truth is yours, the wisdom is yours, and that all things live to you. That in this message, all things would also be clearly shown in you. Yes. And that all this be done to the glory of the Father, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Out of order. 
That oh. was Paul's immediate, immediate answer to the Corinthians. Yes. And somewhat strangely enough, I don't want you to look for the scriptures when I read them to you today. I'm going to list them all for you at the very end. Awesome. Don't be chasing around the Bible. Don't be chasing trying to find stuff geographically. I want you to hear it first and hear it. Amen. 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 I have that problem myself, and I realize it's actually more common than I care to admit. Amen. Just a second. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity. But rejoices in truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Amen. Love never fails. Amen. That is the absolute central point of Corinthians when Paul wrote this. God wouldn't let me start with anything else. Amen. So those were the first words out of my mouth. And that's the reason why, and in case you're curious, this is NASB. Amen. My Bible, which I have to go to, is NKJV. Don't be confused. The message is the same. Amen. Amen. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual men, but as to men of flesh, as to infants in Christ. Stinging words. How do we know it's infants? Because of the context. These are beginners, right? Amen. They are beginning, right? He says, brethren first. You are brothers in Christ. He's not demoting them. He's not casting them out. He's not casting them away. He says, you are brothers, but you are men of flesh. Mm -hmm. You have not become spiritual men and be able to receive what I truly want to impart to you. How much that must have hurt him to say that. He was in Corinth a long time. He set them up. He left for a while, and then he got a letter. It ain't like today. Type it on a on an email machine of your choice, because there's more than just one. Right. Edit and go back and switch stuff around. <laughs> Pull stuff from here. Put it up there. Uh. Uh-uh. Paper in Paul's day cost a day's wage mm. or more. That's an expensive correspondence. We know this because he spoke later about making sure that they bring especially the cloak and the paper. Those are the two things he cared most about. Bring the coat and the paper. I don't remember where that's in, which epistle that's in, but I know that's important for you to get the context of this one. And then as Paul delivered Corinthians and wrote it. He didn't do it without prayer. He didn't do it without fasting. He didn't do it without seeking God's face. And he probably didn't do it without shouting at the ceiling going, what in the world just happened? Because we are also flesh. Yes. We are in this vessel until a later time. Amen. So, brethren, you are exceedingly fleshy based on what I hear. That's what Paul's saying. And we see that he says that they're not spiritual because they're not hearing what the Spirit speaks. Amen. They're being their natural, sinful, old nature, unregenerated Mm. old man. And they are taking up those attitudes, that spirit from within yourself, and that pride. Mm-hmm. Come on. And they are allowing it to tear apart what God put together. 
So with a heavy heart and with great optimism at the same time, Paul had to write this. Verse 2. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. Oh. Wow. For you are still carnal. Ouch. For where there is envy, strife, and division among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? The reason why we know it's infants is because he mentions milk in the context here. He uses the word specifically for milk. And he uses a word that can be interpreted different ways. Immature, babe, small child, no, he's real specific. Infant, milk. Like, you're so far off the mark, I gotta start you at square one again. Oh. Well, let's keep going. For when one says, I am of Paul, and another of Apollos, are you not mere men? They're running by their own agenda and by group agendas. Amen. They are not even thinking about how it affects the body as a whole, mm. how it reflects on God, how it reflects on the testimony that's in their mouth, and how it reflects on the Holy Spirit that lives in them, Amen. and how Amen. offensive it is to God. Amen. Amen. Which brings us to our next little section. What then is Apollos, and what is Paul? Servants through whom you believed, even as the Lord gave opportunity to each one. Servants through whom you believed, as God gave opportunity to each of you, and he gave opportunity to us as ones who gave it to you. And that which they were entrusted with is sacred. Amen. 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 Wow. I planted, Apollos watered, but God was causing the growth. So then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but God who causes the growth. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. yes, come on. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, but each will receive his own reward amen. according to his own labor. <sighs> they were faithful servants to God. They gave the word to the Corinthians as it was given to them. They didn't add anything of their own. Not anything else. They were faithful to give it. And they desired that the Corinthians would be faithful to receive it. Amen. The evidence of their disunity their ungodliness was their jealousy and strife. It was also evidence of petty jealousy. What one might consider grievous jealousy or inflated jealousy. A basically double prided down, stacked on top jealousy. Amen. And an arrogance of superiority. Mm, come on. So now they start saying, I am of one, or I am of another, or I am of Christ, meaning I am above my own teacher. Mm, come on, yeah. come on. Wow. It takes a lot of nerve to say that you're above an apostle of God. Mm, come on, brother. come on. Brother. Come on. <clears throat> and what else do we see? It says, he who plants and he who waters are one, but each will receive his own reward which means the one who plants and the one who waters both receive a reward according to his own labor. 
But it's not the only place you see it. You see it later on too. There are labors and there are rewards. Amen. Amen. For now it says, For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, God's building. Amen. Think about this. God planted you in the place Mm -hmm. that you were created, brought up, lived in. Yes. He invested in you long before the message ever reached you. Amen. 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 He invested in me long before the message ever reached me. Amen. He invested in me long before I even actually submitted to him. Come on, brother. Amen. Come on. And he was patient and planted you long before you have either already submitted or will submit. And it does quite clearly state that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So whether you want to do it here in this life or you are so completely insistent in your pride that you actually are willing to sting God in the face, <laughs> uh, it will become evident. Amen. 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 I believe that's verse 9. Yes. Your way, Holy Spirit. Yes. Oh. Yes. Your way, Holy Spirit. Yes. Gotta check my notes for a second. Sorry. It's okay. Your way, Holy Spirit. Oof. Thank you, Jesus. Here's an interesting understanding God's desire makes the growth possible. Amen. You can't grow yourself. You can't increase yourself. You can't stir up your own strength to make yourself anything more than you already are. There are thousands upon thousands, if not millions upon millions, of self-help, so-called appointed master teachers, gurus in this world, who will tell you that you can listen to what I speak, project your own understanding, and be your own God, and make your own way as much as you declare if you follow my 10 easy steps. Mm, Come on, on, speak. Speak. Speech. Or my 25, because you gotta buy the whole book. Come on, Mary God. Or I'll give you the first three for free on the pamphlet. Amen. Thank God, God's word is freely given. Yes, Yes, it is. Doesn't it make you curious why it would be freely given, yet, the one that promises wealth costs you money. Mm. Mm-hmm. Come on. Speak. Come on, brother. Paul exemplified this when he said, the only thing I can boast in is that I have done so without price. Mm. He worked with his own hands to support himself to make sure that nobody could touch the authenticity of his mm. heart Come in on. delivering the message to them. Come on, man. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. It was because it was forced upon him. He wasn't part of the original 12 crew that followed him around. He was, he was a Pharisee, and he knew it. He knew it. He knew what he was before God got a hold of him. He knew what he was after God got a hold of him, and he was amazed at what God chose him to become. Yes. Amen. 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 Do you think Paul could have made himself an apostle? No. <laughs> Do you think a Pharisee could preach about love? <laughs> <laughs> do you even think that a man so completely elevated in pride mm. could actually speak about servanthood oh, and on, surrendering all? Come on, come on, come on. His credentials, they're on his back, they're on his face, they're on his speech, on his character, on his everything. He refused to surrender anything to be lived in the world that it might strike down his witness. Mm-hmm. Come on, come on. He was charged with something very heavy. He wrote most of the correspondence that we have in letters <clears throat> and laid out the doctrine of the church. Amen. Not apart from the other apostles, don't get me wrong. For they had... They had it handed to them in hand. They walked with the master. Something I imagine Paul, once he was laid hold of, grieved so bitterly that he missed his shot. And Mm. so did the rest of Israel. Come on, come on, come on. But God was gracious and gave him insight, wisdom, and special revelation. Yes, that's right. 
Holy Spirit. Come on. So when Paul says he was a faithful minister a little bit later on, he's not joking. Hmm. And it's not to be taken lightly. That's right. And it's not just some letter out of an old book of some testimony of some man somewhere. All things in context. Amen. Come on. All right. Back into the words themselves. God is everything. The servant is nothing in himself, but is useful to God. That is how you remove pride. Now, we have verse 10. According to the grace of God, which was given to me like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation and another is building on it. Think about that for a second. Someone else is building on the foundation he just laid. The question is who? We'll get to that. But each man must be careful how he builds on it. Oh, this is what I get for doing double-sided. All right, still in the right place. According to the grace of God, number one, first point, the grace of God, nothing else can unravel this. That's right. You can wrestle with the words in this book all your life, and if you don't submit to God, you won't get any of it. Come on. It won't find a how menu, and you will discount it. That's the grace. Wise master builder, architect. That one I actually have here. Oh, I didn't actually write it down. Sorry. Uh, from what I remember, it is architecton. It means uh, master or superior or supreme, and tecton is builder. So it's archis and tecton. Um, so not just your carpenter, not your handyman, not your fix-it guy. This is the guy who brings you the blueprints to the job site, Come on. marks out where the foundation goes, how far it goes in every direction, its shape and its thickness, and how solid that is and ready to be built on. That was his job. And what does it say? It says another is building on it. It says is building, not will be building. It doesn't say has already built. That seems strange. We know that God gives the increase. Amen, amen. Go back a bit. It's right there. So, we know that God is causing the building to be built. Amen. Amen. Without that, your efforts are futile. Amen. Come on. And you yourself are actually required to build with God Come on the same foundation. Come on. That's right. Your entire life is to be that which is built on the foundation of Christ. Amen. Amen. So, the worker needs to pay attention to what the architect lays out. He needs to pay attention to how thick the foundation is. Come on. He needs to know what kind of material he's working with. Am I using second or third rate stuff or am I using first rate stuff? Am I using crooked boards or straight ones? The cheap marble, it's got the scratches in the back and the stuff that's split halfway up. You'll never see it. You're going to use that for an outside wall and just kind of flip it around. Doesn't really matter. Or to use choice stones and sacrifice nothing. That was the heart of Paul. Using choice things, sacrificing nothing, when your life is built upon Christ. Amen. <clears throat> Paul makes this very clear. He says, the foundation is Christ. Amen. It is supreme bedrock. Yes, amen. It is unmovable, unshakable, amen. unsplittable, and it cannot be taken away from you. Hallelujah. And it is already prepared. It's already prepared. That's right. It means 
when you got to the job site, the foundation's already laying there. Amen. The, the corners are staked out, the strings are stretched, the blueprints are on the architect's desk, and he leaves you some letters, and he helps you along the way. But there's also responsibility in the word architect. It means that everything Paul gave, he had to be accountable for. Accountability is old-fashioned in today's world, unfortunately. Amen. But uh, not according to this, not in this time, and not in this place. And that's another main point that Paul's trying to get at here, is your accountability. And no one can lay a different foundation. You can't add a new foundation next to it. You can't go build your stuff on a second place. You can't choose a new site. Saying, we'll just take this whole thing and go put it somewhere else. It is where it is. It's as thick as he made it. And it's marked out for the way he wants it built. Your job is to follow his instructions. Amen. 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 Oh. It says, each man must be careful how he builds on it. Notice it says how. We'll get to what later. How he builds on it. It means with care, practice, diligence, carefulness, consideration, and every other thing that's in the word how, especially if it's anything that's offered to God. Amen. Amen. No man can lay a foundation other than which is already laid. I spoke that, but it's important to reiterate. You can't have a different Christ than the Christ that's Christ. Amen. Come on, come on. Come on. You can't have a different Jesus. There's only one Jesus. Amen. It's the one that was on the cross. That's right. Amen. It's the one who was born for the purpose of being the sacrificial lamb, the high priest, the first apostle, the king, and chief over all his people and nation. Amen. 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 Now, if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become evident. For the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire. And the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. That is what you build. And the fact that you are going to be building on it. Yes. On. Your life is built. It is grown by God and it's increased, it's shaped, it's formed, it's pruned. That's God's job. Your job is to be willing to grow, be increased, be pruned, be Amen. shaped, and to be built. Amen. 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 Come on. That's right. And to study. Yes. The reason why it was necessary for Paul to rebuke churches who did not have doctrine soundly put into them and they didn't lay it to heart is that they relied on spiritual gifts and they did not have the wisdom which came out of the Holy Scripture. For those of you who don't know this, that's the Old Testament. Amen. And that's the foundation which lays hold of and gives life to the revelation Amen. of the New Testament, the New covenant, the new agreement, and God's purpose for each of us, ultimately. Amen. But if they were trying to be spiritual, yet they did not have the scripture to refer to, to be corrected, they are guaranteed for error. Mm. That stings to say. That really does. But it's true. And then it says, if any man builds on the foundation, gold, silver, precious stone. That's one category. Then we have wood, hay, and straw. Wood, hay, and straw are the first ones I'm going to address. These are the least. Wood, hay, straw. 
Sticks, chaff, stubble. Things you can scrounge up and try to assemble recklessly or without carefulness and they're temporary. Amen. 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 So then who are they serving? Someone or something that's temporary or someone or something that's permanent? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. I can't offer sticks, shovel, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Yo, might as well put them together, right? <laughs> Chaff and stubble. They might as well be one group and the sticks are slightly better, but not by much. Come on, brother. Amen. It says that all things on the earth will eventually be consumed with fire. Amen. Come on. Which means no matter how temporary this stuff seems and how permanent you might actually think it is, it is certainly not eternal. That's right. Amen. That's right. It was never meant to be so. That's right. But let's find out what is. Amen. Gold, silver, and precious stones. Each man's work will be evident. The day will show it. Revealed by fire and testing. Whew. You're going to be tested. Yes. Your work is going to be tested. Amen. The words that come out of your mouth are going to be tested. Yes. Your life is going to be tested. And you need to hold up underneath the testing. That's right. That's right. Amen. Oh. Loyalty, honor, service, faithfulness. Amen. We ascribe these things to the military. Paul does too. That's right. But um, I believe it's Romans, but I'm not sure. I believe it really was. When he said that um, any man who lives for the civilian things in this life has forgotten his enlistment. Mm. Come on. Now, that's not exactly what it says. That's not a quote. That's a paraphrase so you guys get this. Amen. He wants us to serve faithfully. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. And a shout out to the Marine Corps. Guys, I love your slogan. <laughs> Semper Fidelis. Always faithful. Amen. In as much as the Marine Corps enlists soldiers for their service, Semper Fidelis applies to us Come on. in Amen. God's service. Yes. Amen, 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 amen. It means in all things and in all trial. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you. All right. So we know the quality of the thing you choose to build with. We know that God is the one ultimately building. Yes. He's the one that empowers the building to be built. He's the one who designed it, just like he showed in Exodus. Do all things according to the plan which I have shown you. And then he gave those instructions to the builders, and they built the tabernacle. Amen. Everyone had their own thing. You had the goldsmith, the guys that worked the bronze, the curtain makers, the ones that were jewelers for the hoops, the guys that were cutting the boards, people that were making all the coverings for the tents, the ones who did the seams. Everything and everyone had a specialty. Guess what? They already got them. That trade skill came from Egypt. Basically, Egypt helped them build the tabernacle. Right. That's bizarre. So then, what about this life? Come on, brother. Come on, come on, come on. The things that you go through are testimonies not only to God, but to those around you and to yourself. Amen. Amen. Those who are wise will lay hold of the wisdom of God, which I'm getting to. Amen. But that wisdom isn't found in us. It's found in God. Amen. And Amen. he demonstrates it, and he did demonstrate it quite clearly in all of Paul's suffering. And yet still he was faithful in all things. Yeah. Amen. And one greater than him. Actually, many can debate however many, many there were, because only God knows who ranks where and what. Only God eternally and faithfully and concisely knows exactly who ranks where when we all show up. So who was the greatest? The apostles asked one to the other and argued about it and wrestled for it and mm -hmm. cleaved for it. Come on. Come on, brother. And Jesus said, you do not know what you're asking. <sighs> Peach. Amen. Paul was faithful in as much as he could be, but the one who is supremely faithful above all things is God, 
and Amen. Christ, who was faithful, Hallelujah. even to the point of being humbled out of godly form and into the form of a man, yes. and being submitted to the oh, will man. and to the prophecies given beforehand Praise Jesus. to be sacrificed Jesus. and become a sacrifice so that we should live as a living sacrifice. Come on. Amen. Amen. All right. Dun, 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 dun. All right, cool. We've tested each man's work by fire to see if it is secure. And if any man's work, which he has built on the foundation, remains, he will receive a reward. Wait, what? I get to have a reward? <laughs> yes. <laughs> if there was no reward, there'd be no incentive. Unfortunately, we're still people, and we do like to have incentives. <laughs> God was wise enough to be able to give them to right. us. <laughs> so he incentivized us, but mm, not with money. Come on. Not with big houses. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Not with shiny brand new Ferraris or an entire mm. hangar full of Come on. airplanes, yachts, boats, mm. and on. every other thing that demonstrates power on earth. Mm. Even influence over men mm. and the ability to control others' lives. Mm. Come on. Mm. Oh, wow. Christ was tested with all these things. Yes. Do this and I will give you this. Do this. It says this. Do that if you're really God. Nope. I love his response. Mm -hmm. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. That's yes. right. Yeah. Come on. And it amuses me. I thought I'd have trouble teaching this. <laughs> and I'm thankful that he's the one working this thing out. Come because on. it ain't me. Come on. So we have our offering ourselves. We have our work, our lives, and the service to others. Now we have the sharper point. Do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Amen. Ooh. Sounds like spirit be getting testy. <laughs> If any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him. That's right. It says will. That's scary. For the temple of God is holy. There's underlines and like exclamation marks next to that thing. Okay. <laughs> and that is what you are. Come on. And now you end up with a question mark. How can that possibly be true? How can I be the thing that God has chosen to make holy to himself, to do all these things, show his glory, and live for him? Holy Spirit, come on. Jesus said it famously. Man can do nothing. Man cannot do anything but the Spirit. Flesh can't do it. The Spirit can. So then what in the world happened to make you God's holy temple. Individually and collectively, by the way, not just you by yourself and not just everybody together excluding you by yourself. So it's both you by yourself and everybody together, both at the same time at all times and interchangeably, as fun as that gets. He needed to make us clean so that he could indwell. Amen. He did that with a sacrifice and with a confession of faith and the gift of faith, which came from Abraham so long ago so that we should have a share in Abraham's blessing. Amen. Amen. And a lot of people would argue, well, the blessing of Abraham is to have a hundredfold whenever I plant and to, to, to have um, stuff, right? Mm, hit the brakes for a second. Everything in the Old Covenant was under flesh <laughs> because the law was made weak because of flesh. Amen. Paul very famously spoke. The law is holy and just and spiritual, but I am flesh. Mm. And then he also says, the law, which was holy and spiritual and strong, was made weak because of my flesh. Oh, man. So, what's the solution? Leave it to God. Amen. His wisdom, not ours. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God chose a sacrifice no one would choose to do. He chose a time that everyone would think bizarre. 
He chose a people to do it through whom everybody would underestimate. And he chose to do it in a way which everybody denies. Come on, brother. Like the learned people, the Pharisees, they had the information, but they didn't have the wisdom that comes from the Holy Spirit to actually know what was about to happen. Otherwise, they would not have crucified the Son of Glory. But if they were also careful, they would have noticed where it says quite clearly it was required. Mm -hmm. So even if their eyes were opened yeah. in full of tears, they would have to allow it. Amen. 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 Wow. Amen. God's will. Amen. Because he set forth for it to happen yeah. no matter what we interjected. This is the reason why Peter catches his rebuke when he says, far be it from you. And I imagine Jesus on a hot heel spinning around looking him dead in the face because they were walking just being cool. And he's like, Get thee behind me. You have you are not thinking of the will that I need to fulfill, but your own will and your own desires and the desires of this world. You can't see what I see, you don't know what I know. You're not gonna fulfill what I need to fulfill, and you can't receive it yet. Keyword yet. Thank God we're after that point. Amen. 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 Thank God. God's spirit goes out to lay hold of those whom he will. Yes, amen. 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 And we don't get to pick who. That's right. It's not up to me or anybody else or anybody else or the hierarchy of the church or even if like 10 denominations got together and Come said, on, you know brother. what, we will never forever, ever, 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 ever accept anyone out of X, Y, Z, D, G, E, I don't care what letter you use, and they're out of order on purpose. Someone from that particular area. Why? Strangely enough, God decided to take from all nations, all peoples, all tongues, and all tribes. Yes. Amen. 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 Come on. Praise the Lord. So, this is the reason why he's so grieved by their division. Because it's a false testimony, a false gospel. They're in their flesh seeking desirous things Yet they don't know what they're actually seeking. No one opened their eyes yet. They should have known it by now, but they fell back into their own desires. We don't know what they are facing exactly, you know? Life is life. But uh, we have it a little better off now yes. in a lot of ways. And in some ways, we might actually have it worse off than mm -hmm. those who first heard. That's right. Come on. They were closer to the outpouring. Some of them were graced enough to even see some of the apostles in a person. Some of them even saw the shadow of Peter move across somebody and somebody got healed. It was like, Ooh, okay, that's, you can't deny that. All right, so we can't deny God's holiness. We can't deny his claim on us. We can't deny that he washed us and made us fit for him to indwell. But what we can do is offend him. Come on, mm. come on. If we choose to bring back 